That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Jason David Frank. Boom shakalaka. Please do not change channel. Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm G.W. Pomisher. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have been at iHeart Books in Jacksonville, Florida all day long, hanging with fantastic authors uh, from the Florida Writers Association. And we are here right now hanging with author Donna Lee Overly, the author of The Trinity Knot. Donna, thanks for hanging with us. Thanks. All thanks right. for interviewing they, me. We're the last people standing. We are, but we're still standing. That's right? right. That's right. I think we get like a medal for victory. We are. We're gonna click. We're gonna close this place down. And let me tell you, an author's conference is better than closing the bar down. As far as you know, I'm telling the truth. You should have been here. Uh, the Trinity Knot. Yes. Tell us about the Trinity Knot. Trinity Knot, releasing the knot of silence. The knot of silence. Yes. It's a contemporary women's fiction, and it deals with um, current women's issues okay such as the me too movement okay i wrote this book four years ago wow and it wasn't considered very popular and then the me too movement hit there's a, a sexual assault in the book wow and now it's very timely no yeah it is yeah, it very, is a very um, timely subject I, you know i journalists don't ask this question I, and I think it's, it's uh, male journalists really don't ask this question. But you wrote this four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we have seen a movement in the last year. And that movement is it's, a, it's amazing. It's wonderful to see. Come out, tell your stories, make the world what it should be instead of accepting what it is. Correct. But that's a philosophy that we've had for a generation, for two generations really, because my kids are all adults. We've had this philosophy. What took so long? Why did it take so long? Four years from here to the mainstream. 20 years we've been telling a, a generation of kids, stand up make the world what it should be, not what it is. Mm -hmm. Why did it take so long? You really want to know the answer? I do. I really, truly do. Because nobody's asking this question. Because we've been talking about equality. We've been talking about mm -hmm. equity. We've been talking mm -hmm. about these things. We, we were, we've been talking about them for 50 years, really, if we want to really you know, get down and dirty about it. But at least the last 20 or 30. And it's only in the last year or two mm -hmm. that we're seeing a real push for progress. And you started four years ago with four your book. Four years ago I started this so book. So why so long? Why from there to here? I believe the mm -hmm. reason why it took so long is because men are in denial that it even exists. And I fear that the Me Too movement will fade away well, even until if I don't, men make other men responsible. But even if I don't believe them. that I do it, even if I don't believe that my contemporaries do it, hmm. I can't deny that it was ever done. Right. I can't deny that this is the way we've interacted as people to one another for a very long time, a long time before I got here or you got here. Well, I think that, I'll interrupt you there, I think mm -hmm. that men are denying the frequency of it. Oh. And I came to the realization just a month or two ago when I was preparing one of my talks to give at a library, if almost every woman has a story. Sadly, what percentage I know that to be true. Men Sadly, I know that to be true. Every woman has a story mm -hmm. that I have interacted with. And, and you're right, a very small percentage of men have those stories. Because we don't have those stories, though, doesn't mean that we shouldn't empathize with those who do or, or understand that they exist. Or are you denying that? I mean, ignorance is not blissful in this case at all. It's the right. antithesis of blissful. So, 
you know, we know that they happen, and sadly, I know that you're telling the truth when you say almost every woman has a story. Correct. And not many men do, but I know I don't have a story. I know enough women to know that they do. So uh, it, just, it it boggles my mind. It does that you have to, you know, spend four years before you are trending when you're talking about a topic like this. What inspired you to write it down? It was a dare from a friend, and it was a healthy alternative to Fifty Shades of Grey. A healthy alternative to Fifty Shades? Okay. In 2013, the number one holiday gift for women was, was yes. fi the first book, Fifty mm -hmm. Shades of Grey. And on January 2nd, my girlfriend told me this fact, and she said, you could write a book just as good as Fifty Shades of Grey. And I decided I'd never wanted to write before. Uh -huh. English was my worst subject in high school, never. And I started writing in January 2nd of 2014. I know the exact date I started writing this book. And I wanted something different. I just didn't want your typical mm -hmm. love story, romance. So from here to today, mm -hmm. um, and like you said, when you wrote this four years ago, this wasn't a very popular topic. No, this wasn't a very popular book. I was told I had to change it. Wow. How do you feel now four years later when the world is finally opening their eyes and taking a look? I feel the same because I told the people that the public, the literary agents that said, you must this change this coming. book. And I said, I'm not going to change it. And it's, and it's there I, and it, you stand behind it. I and it's four stand years behind later. it. And not, not only are you doing it, but now it's, it's a form of vindication. Every, everyone's telling their stories. Right. And I, I truly pray that, 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 uh, that it has an impact and that people start paying attention and that it doesn't get noisy. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's important. Um, are you still writing? Do you still oh, write? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just want to elaborate yes. on that. Just, I had some beta readers read my book before I had it published uh -huh. four or year, three years ago. And um, nothing feels better at validation is when they call me. A 70-year-old woman called me and said, let me tell you what happened to me. I wow. never told my parents. And they're both in their grave. Wow. So if this book will get women to talk about something that happened in their life that they have been burying for years, even though it's a fiction book, I think it really has a place in society. Well, I think fiction, that's what fiction is meant to do. Um, I, I, we talk a lot to groups of writers, authors, mm -hmm. and other people, and, we, and I always I tell people, as writers, we have a single obligation, the only obligation we have, and that is to tell the truth, to tell a human truth. And truth and fact are two different things. Fact, that's for the journalists, that's for the news guys. Truth is about what goes on between human beings. And that's our job as writers. And if we're doing our job, whether we're popular or not popular, whether we're sharing um, a fiction story or an autobiograph an autobiography, we're going to get to people's soul for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. past their mind, past their prejudices, past their bias, past the fact whether or not they're male or female, whether you believe in this or you don't believe, because it's not threatening, it's a fiction environment. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a fiction story. Right. It's non-threatening, and by the time you realize that you just learned something, it's too late, and you've already got it. I think um, that's one of the things that makes fantasy and science fiction and, and all of our many genres of writing so popular with people is that they, you accidentally learn a thing or two while you think oh. you're exploring something fantastical. So, um, your necklace, it's to Trinity Knot. Yes, You noticed it is. that right away. Uh, I noticed it on the cover of your book that. also. Um, is this significant because of the book or is the, is the book's imagery significant because of the knot? Um, I'm just I curious. I wore this, the story has the knot in it. Uh -huh. It's a necklace. Um, the man takes it from her as a memento. Oh. And it also was a painting series that she painted to get over the grief of her mother dying. Okay. And her mother had given her that necklace when she was and 16. So, the so she had to get the necklace into the story. Back. Yeah. So that's why I, I wear like the that. necklace. I like that. 
Uh, um, and you asked if it was uh, another book in the works. This is really a trilogy. There's a one there. It's okay. the first one. Um, the second book, also contemporary women's issues. It's unwanted pregnancy, exploring abortion, adoption. Um, there are many women out there who had an abortion, who another hushed topic that we don't talk about, but they, they kept hidden from their family. Mm -hmm. And so the second book is that. And the third book, there is a third book. <laughs> <laughs> it deals with depression <laughs> and, and addiction. So they're all wow. basically taboo topics that are very prevalent in society, but people don't talk Wanna about. Want to talk about, that's much. right. That's right. That's why we read. That's right. That's why we read, because it in, in, inspires us to talk, to tell our stories, to tell them on paper, to tell them to each other. So, mm -hmm. well done, thank first you. of all. Thank you very much for what you do every day, every time you sit at the keyboard. Um, so, where are you going to be? Yeah. Where are you going to be next? Where can people find you up the road? Up the road? Are you taking this book somewhere else and I signing am. it somewhere else? Where are I, you going to go? I just came back from Texas. I'm going to Pennsylvania. Wow. Yes, Gettysburg, Hanover, Pennsylvania. Wonderful. Yeah, I have three Globe speaking. trotter, but nation trotter, really, but it'll work. I'm going back to my hometown. Really? I'm going back to my high school, yeah. Fantastic. After 40 years, I'm going back. 40 years, yeah. you're going back to, wow. Taking my book to the, to the libraries. Y'all get ready in a hometown. Yeah. Facebook, they know I'm coming. They know you're coming? Yeah, They're ready? Absolutely. Outstanding. Yeah, um, and you said you're going back to your high school. Mm -hmm. You're going to be speaking? or? Yes, I am. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, if you had one message that you hope that young ladies take when they read your story, and it, it's a fiction story. So it is a fiction So they're going to dive story. in. The first thing they're going to be is entertained oh, because absolutely. it's a fiction story. Um, th if they could take away one more thing, besides that feeling of entertainment that they get when they read a good fiction novel, mm. what would it be? The main character is an artist, and she paints through all her emotions. And so I hope they would learn a little bit about art and maybe expressing your feelings, whether it be through art as my character or through dance or for, through whatever um, medium that I they- I like her. Be an got. artist. That they That's do. what we are. We're encouraging. We need a so community. <laughs> you can you cannot keep those feelings inside. So get them out somehow. So this book, she paints, and that's how she deals with her emotions and tries to find answers. But not everybody's a painter. So maybe you're a dancer. Maybe you fish. I don't know. Maybe you play we tennis. Write. Maybe you write. That's right. So, so uh, do not keep the feelings. That's inside. right. Well, you get know we. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the arts and entertainment community, so we're big believers in that, and I hope you all get that message out there. I know one young artist that's always doing her work uh, on the computer. So um, we're going to say thank you to our partners and friends before we wrap it up. We're going to say thank you to some unique magazines, Famous Faces and Funnies, Krypton Radio, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics, Asylum, Enter uh, uh, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, our great friends here at iHeart Books, and the Florida Writers Association. Uh, if you're watching this show and you see us on social media, we are going to give a shout out real quick to Tambri Art for the fantastic uh, logo designs that we are using like every single day. So uh, we couldn't do what we do without every artist, author, filmmaker, entertainer, and creator that we talk to, and of course without you watching the show. So keep coming back, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Thank you.